YouTube. This is Beginner's Guide to GPG, Lesson 3, Linux Installation. Um, in this lesson, we'll be installing your first Linux distribution. You need to be sure you have a machine you're willing to install Linux on, or you'll at least have to set up a virtual machine like I will in this lesson. It is really important that you back up all the files that are currently on that machine. They will be destroyed by the installation. Uh, activity 3, one, one activity for this lesson, just do everything that I do, absolutely everything, every single slide. Um, by the end of it you'll be familiar with installing Linux and using it a little bit, just a little bit. Warning, this guide only covers Linux Mint, Ubuntu and Debian are different. If you're going to try them, be sure to look up an installation guide for those particular distributions. There's one for Debian that I found. First step to getting Linux is to download it. <clears throat> First download the 64-bit ISO from the following link. You'll notice there are many different desktop names. Cinnamon Mate KDE. These are basically the look, the graphical user interface of the desktop. Um, I'd recommend Cinnamon, but you're free to try them all and see what you like the look of and the feel of. Um, another thing you'll notice there's both torrent and HTTPS, no, HTTP download available. Um, I prefer the torrent because there's, there's some verification there, so you don't have to really verify the ISO afterwards if you use torrents. Moving along, burn the ISO to a USB or DVD. In Windows 7, 8, and 10, there's a built in tool for doing this. You just right click the file, then click burn disk image. Another program that'll do it is Infra Recorder. Another program again that'll do it, probably the easiest that I've used is Universal USB Installer, easy as one, two, three. So give those a try. If you've got Mac OS X, that's fine. Just launch Disk Utility, then insert a blank DVD. Then drag your ISO file to the left pane of Disk Utility. Then both the ISO and the disk will be listed. Then select ISO file and click burn button in the toolbar. And finally ensure that verify burn data checkbox is ticked. Finally click burn and the ISO will be burned to a DVD and you'll be ready to you know, use it, install it. Awesome. After we've downloaded our ISO then burned it to a DVD or USB we need to boot from installation media. So. To do this, you'll have to access your computer's BIOS or UEFI menu. This is usually done by pressing the delete F12 F8 key immediately after powering it on. Although each computer is unique, each motherboard, you'll have to Google your own laptop or motherboard to find out what your UEFI is if it doesn't just say during the boot up. Once you're inside that menu, you need to change the boot device so that your computer boots from USB DVD instead of the hard drive. With modern UEFI, you may need to enable legacy support in order to boot from your installation media. If successful, you will boot into the Linux Mint desktop. Awesome. Right? Installation. Um, there's a bunch of slides in the lecture notes on how to install, but I'm going to show you just personally, um, and you can see how it works. First we start off, I'll boot this virtual machine. It has the Linux Mint disk in it. There we go. And you start Linux Mint. There was also another copy of Linux Mint installed on this before, so we're basically going to install over it. No blockers. Just wait for it to boot. Cool, there we go. Cool, so once your Linux Mint disk is booted, you'll basically see this screen. This is the live disk. It allows you to check out the interface. You can see what it looks like. 
You can also play with some of the software um, from this actual disk, but we're going to use the install Linux Mint function right here. So this isn't your this isn't your Linux installation. This is the live disk that we that we're doing the installation from. It's like English for the language. You have internet and you have enough space. Good. So we are going to encrypt Linux Mint installation for security. This will encrypt the entire disk. You can use one of your strong passwords you generated in the last lesson for this. So, yeah. Choose a security key. So here you're going to type in the key you made. And it should say strong after you've done this. If it doesn't say strong, and you've done something really wrong generating your password, and you need to go to lesson two of this series and study it again. Oh, I hope I don't type it incorrectly. That would be embarrassing. Yeah, there we go. Override disk space. Usually I would click this. Um, you should click this yourself. I'm not going to because we just want to save time um, when I'm showing it to you. But yeah, you should always click that because it gets all the files in your previous installation and it shreds over them before encrypting the disk and then starting a new installation, um, which is really good for security. Moving along. It's taking a while. Cool, there we go. To continue, changes will be these changes will be written to disk. Otherwise you can make changes manually. That looks really good. Setting up a root space and a swap space. Let's do it. What are we waiting for? I need to select my location. For some reason, Mint Ubuntu installer for some reason thinks that Perth is a thousand k's north of where it actually is. It's down there, but okay, yeah, moving along. My keyboard, English US. The name. I'm just gonna call it demo. Now this is our pseudo password. We're going to use the other strong password that you made. You did make it right. You did do your homework for last lesson. Of course you did. Ah, oh, finally. Here we have an option to encrypt your home folder because we've selected full disk encryption. This is actually redundant, don't do it. Um, if you don't have full disk encryption, you could try that. And we're going to want to require password for login just for security again. So now it will actually begin the Linux Mint installation and we'll have to do some video editing and skip ahead because this usually takes about 10 minutes. All right, I'll see you guys soon. All right, our installation has finished. We now need to restart and remove the boot media. So that's the CD or the DVD. Oops. There we go, now that'll boot into Mint. We'll have a look at that later. <clears throat> okay, how to use Linux. The desktop you've just installed is actually a full replacement for your Windows or OS X machine. The default software includes LibreOffice, which is a full-featured open source replacement for Microsoft Office. 
uh, GIMP, which is a powerful photo editing program, Firefox, Thunderbird Mail, which is an email client. Um, we'll actually be using that software in this course because GPG is for emailing and that's an email client. Transmission, which is the standard torrent client, Bracero, which is a CD DVD burning program, and HexChat, which is the standard IRC client. Take a moment to browse your installation and see all your new software. First thing you're going to want to do with your Mint is to explore it a bit, have a look at the menu. Uh, you'll note that there are categories like accessories or internet or office. Um, you'll also notice that there's a bar on the left. With that bar on the left, it's like a favorite bar. Uh, you can drag and drop applications to and from it. So you basically have all of your favorite applications in the left corner here. And there's also lock out, lock screen, and power down buttons. <coughs> Next thing you want to do is explore the update manager. In the bottom right corner you'll see a little shield icon. That's your update manager. After you open it, you'll see options to edit your repository settings, where you download your updates from. Also a refresh button, which downloads information about new updates. And an install updates button, which applies those updates. Uh, you'll notice it will prompt you for a user password. This is part of how Linux prevents the unauthorized installation of programs. It's part of why Linux is secure. So yeah, have a play with that. Also change the repositories to somewhere that's close to you. Explore network settings. The networking icon in the bottom right corner. It might look like a Wi-Fi emblem. In this, in this picture it looks like a cable. This opens up your network settings. Where you can edit the settings for all the network adapters you have. Woohoo. Templates. Ah, templates is really more easy to explain with the actual, by actually showing you. So let's log in. First we get past hard disk encryption with the password I've already set. Hopefully I type it right. Bummer. There we go. Like I said, with strong passwords, the usability drops a bit. But I'm sure if I was to take these passwords a dozen times, I would remember them. Off the top of my head. Ooh. So yeah, templates. What did I mean by templates? Basically, when you right click the file explorer, you'll have an option to create new files, but you'll notice that there's nothing there. And we're going to basically add a template. Okay, let's log in. First time's a charm, sweet. So this is what your Linux Mint Cinnamon desktop is going to look like after just installing it. After a minute or two when it finally loads up. This virtual machine's a bit slow. There we go. So, templates. What did I mean by templates? You'll notice when you look through the directory structure in Linux uh, that it's kind of like Windows. You've got documents, downloads, music, pictures, templates, videos. But what if we wanted to go into documents and create a new document? We would see no templates installed. How do I fix this on a standard installation? Let me show you. 
uh, basically to do this you go you would have to create whatever file you want so let's say a text document and now we get a blank text document we would just save as a template so we see in our home directory we've got a templates folder we'll save this as new document .odt save so now when we right click we can see new document woohoo um, for the command line section we're going to be doing in a bit we're going to want to create a file so let's just call it new file and yeah it's basically that will let's do it let's wait <clears throat> So you've created that folder in documents. Moving along. Learning the command line, finally. The command line allows you to do everything you cannot do with the GUI, the graphical user interface. It is important to learn a little bit about the command line because you will end up using it in this course. First, right click your desktop and select open in terminal. You will then see a CLI command line interface. Now for your first command, type PWD. This stands for print working directory. You will see something like this. Here we see the pwd command typed in and then below it prints out what actual directory we were in, which in this case it was desktop. Moving along. What does this output mean? If we look at it a bit closer. Well first we have demo at Demo out is basically the user account we're currently using. If we were using a different user account, that name would be different. Next we notice demo das virtual box. This is the host name or the name of the machine. After that we notice tilde forward slash desktop. This is your current working directory. The tilde forward slash emblem is a shortened representation of your home directory. Hmm, remember that, that's important. So if we use tilde forward slash, we're basically typing slash home slash demo for this user. So if we did tilde slash desktop, that would really mean home slash demo slash desktop. Yeah. Hopefully you get that if you don't reread it a few times. So you're currently at the desktop directory and I want to navigate to the documents directory. To do this in the CLI I would type cd tilde forward slash documents. Note that since tilde forward slash represents the home directory like I just said this is the same as typing cd home demo documents. cd command stands for change directory. And yeah, you'll see something like that. Uh, notice that the address, the blue part here, changes from desktop to documents. So now we're in the documents folder. Awesome. So we've we created a file in this directory, as I already said. How do we view it? Uh, let's type ls. That creates a list of files currently in that directory. You can see an example there. Flags. To add flags to ls, we could go dash la. These extra bits are called flags. They basically change the function of the command. Here the dash L means print detailed format and dash A means print hidden files and directories. Note that dot refers to the current folder and dot dot refers to the folder above it. So if you were to type cd dot, that would actually take you to the directory you're already in. It wouldn't, it wouldn't move you anywhere. But you could enter that command if you wanted. Interesting, right? Moving along. Where you can find information about these flags you're wondering 
each command has either a dash h or dash dash help feature that would allow you to read up on the command. There's an example of the ls one. Also, there are detailed manuals available for every command. To provoke those, you would type man ls, so you'd put man in front of ls, and that would show you the manual. Where can you get extra help? Your three lines of support, Google, or whatever your favorite search engine is, Linux Mint forums, or the Linux Mint IRC channel. To get into that, you would just open hex chat and you would automatically be connected to it. Activity four, get more familiar with your distribution in your own time. There are some more links about installation of Mint. If you still have any questions, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. See ya.